guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Katie Wismer. I'm an author and an editor. I have nine books out right now, kind of ten. And today we're going to be doing a working for myself update. I am particularly excited about this one because I just realized it's pretty much officially been three full years since I started working for myself full time. I make one of these videos every six months or so. I'll have the playlist linked down below if you want to see previous updates. Also the previous video on this channel was kind of a part one to this video where I was just talking about my current mindset with my career and we kind of did a reaction to the previous one of these update videos. Today's video is going to be more the business side. We're going to go into the numbers, got pie charts, all of the usual statistics, but knowing me we'll do some of the other kind of chats as well. So just in case anyone happens to be new here, I graduated college college the summer of 2019. Did a bunch of stuff until I was able to work for myself full-time and I officially did that I want to say the beginning of September of 2020 so it's currently August of 2023 it's been about three years so it's not that I've been publishing for three years it's I've been working for myself full-time for three years and these are my books. I have three poetry collections, three contemporaries, these two are companion series, this is a standalone and then I have a new adult kind of like dark urban fantasy vampire series the first three books are out now. The last book comes out this year in October. Six novels, three poetry collections. It's been about seven months since the last update. So since then, Broken Perfect Lies came out in February of this year, which is like a romantic suspense. It's got stalkers, bodyguard romance, that kind of stuff. And then the last book in that Marionette's Vampire series is Ruthless Ends, and that comes out in October which we'll get into it because it wasn't originally supposed to come out in October. So the structure I think we usually do with this video is we talk about my different jobs and the weight that they're currently holding in my income, and then we'll get into which books of mine are selling better and things like that. It used to be that books was a smaller percentage of my income, but I've been like slowly watching it grow, hoping it'll become like my main job. So I guess we'll just jump straight into the pie charts. Here's what we're looking like as of August of 2023. My books are at about 60% of my income socials is around 16 percent other two percent we'll get into it my rental property is about eight percent and then my freelance editing is 14 percent this is exactly what i expected this to look like if you've watched since the first update this is drastically drastically different editing and socials like youtube stuff used to be the largest portion of my job and now they've both honestly taken so much of a backseat they've kind of just turned into hobbies intentionally. That editing number I was curious about because I have been edit doing so many fewer editing clients this year just because I've been so busy with my books and I really wanted the time to focus on my own stuff. I also feel like I got a little burnt out on editing clients because I used to take on so many. So year to date, I'm currently on my ninth client of the year. And comparing that to this time last year, I was on my 18th client. So I've literally done half as much of editing as usual. And then taking a little bit of a deeper look just on that social slice, which is about 16%, just going into what makes that up, we have Patreon at about 69%, sponsors at nine, affiliates at four, creator fund at five, and ads at 13. This is also drastically different from years ago. YouTube used to be a really big part of my job. I used to take on a lot of sponsors. Now, <laughs> um, if you watch my content, you've probably noticed there's way way fewer of them and I did a comparison from this year to this time last year we're at a 79% decrease from sponsors which again is intentional affiliate links are like if I say hey I read this book you should get it and I link it down below in the description if you buy it I'll get like five cents from the sale but that kind of thing I'm also like an affiliate for specific products or companies like publisher rocket which I love and I would recommend to anyone so if anyone purchases that I get a little bit of a chunk out of that sale. Creator fund, this will look very different six months from now too because this is from the Instagram Reels bonus program and the creator fund on TikTok. This category shot up in the previous update because I was making a good deal from that Instagram Reels bonus program which they have since discontinued. So this chunk has a few months worth of that still. Now it's gone. Now that won't be a factor at all and I make no money from the TikTok creator fund. We're talking maybe like I'll get $20 every three months from them, like nothing. And then ads are the ads that run on my videos here on YouTube, which are annoying. Thank you for your patience. Obviously, Patreon is carrying this whole category on its back. So if you do happen to be one of my patrons, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you. Small inevitable plug. My Patreon page is pay what you can. So no matter which tier you're part of, you get access to everything. I do bonus content over there every month. There's a Patreon exclusive book, stuff like that. Sorry, if you can hear like 
mouth sounds my cat is laying right behind you and he's decided to give himself a manicure right now what's funny about all of this to me is with books being such a big chunk in the pie chart now if you've seen the previous update something i've talked about before is i like how diversified my income is because working for yourself being a self-published author is obviously not the most stable job it changes month to month year to year every day is different honestly so putting all of your eggs in that basket is really risky and so i've said over and over again i don't want to put that pressure on my books to make my full-time income which in part is still true but i feel like i've just been like regurgitating that because i feel like that's what i should say and that's like the smart thing to do whereas if i'm being honest the books have been paying my bills for a really long time the rest of the things that i do are some nice money on the side and like i said they're hobbies i do them because i enjoy them but the books pay the bills and they have for a long time and while i'm still mindful that like that could change at any time and i like having like backup plans i have a lot less fear around that now of depending on the books because i have managed to stabilize a livable income off of the books for years now that's not to say that couldn't change but keeping my income super diversified isn't as big of a priority for me anymore mainly just because of time and stretching myself too thin trying to equally apply myself to all of these different jobs when the way that i work as a writer is i can't do like the same amount of work every single day and just like slowly chip away at my projects i am a like i need to fully immerse myself into this book for a week i don't come out of my apartment no one sees me i don't talk to anyone sometimes i forget to eat <laughs> like i just need these periods of time where it's all I work on I am all in or I am all out I can't like clock in and clock out like a regular job I've tried but my creative process doesn't like to do the nine to five kind of style also in case you're new here I realized I didn't explain my rental property the condo that I lived before this apartment I'm just renting out while I'm living here I've also gotten questions on that before either people who are looking for places to live or they're wanting to rent their places out too I rent my apartment out through furnished finder which is something that traveling nurses use, although we've had other people stay with us who aren't nurses. My parents, I say we because my parents rent out their basement apartment and they use the same thing. So the renters that I have in there are anywhere from like just a month to a three month or a six month at a time kind of lease. So they're not quite like a long-term rental, but it's not like a daily like Airbnb kind of thing. And that percent has gone up a little bit because I have raised the rent over there just to match surrounding properties and i don't know if anyone is actually that interested in that side of my business so we won't talk too much about it i'm trying to think if there's any other final thoughts on these different parts of my job before we get talking on the books something i'm really really grateful about my job is a very large percentage of it is passive income which has been super helpful to me honestly this past year ish because i've been still working a lot but i've been dealing with burnout so i feel like i haven't been as efficient i haven't been putting out the books as quickly as i had in years past back in 2021 i pumped out three full-length long books this year i'll have two books come out one of which was like already written at the start of the year so really i've only written one book i say that and i think people misinterpret and think like all of my income is passive i don't have to do anything and it just keeps coming in that's not it at all it just i need less it needs less like nurturing like i'm not trying to grow a plant from scratch but i do have to keep it alive you know like the youtube videos if people watch them still make money every month even if i'm not posting anything new the books that are already out sell books even if i'm not publishing anything new but i do have to continue to market them the only category of mine that doesn't really do passive income is editing clients if i'm not editing someone's manuscript i'm not making any money then my rental property is just a little bit risky i am so again knock on wood so fortunate that since the day i moved out to now it's pretty much always fully booked someone's always in there because if not i would have to pay for the mortgage and for my rent here out of pocket and that that would be a big hit okay should we pivot let's talk about the books a little bit so usually in a year that i have a new book release i would expect that book to be the biggest seller of the year no however let me show you the pie chart from the previous update from six months ago this is what things looked like six months ago that large chunk is my book the anti-relationship year at over 46 percent clearly the best seller it's a standalone it's easy to market it goes viral on social media semi-often when i make videos about it but now is it still the best seller for the last six months no it's not for the first time in a while with these updates that book is not the best seller we have the marionettes at 29.7 percent and then also wicked souls at 20.8 and blood the size at 17.8 so the the anti-relationship year is coming in fourth place 
I can't even remember the last time that happened at about 17%. You can see Broken Perfect Lies is at 10. That's my new release. Poetry all together have clumped together at 1% and then the Anti-Virginity Pact at 4. So you can see the Marionette series in general is selling the best right now which i think is for a couple of different reasons i've been marketing it a lot more the last book is we're getting closer to the release of the last book so i think people who've been putting off reading the series until it's complete might start picking it up now and i also have a kickstarter running right now for deluxe content on those books so i think that's just bringing a lot more attention to the series in general but then because i was curious and because we did it last time that pie chart is for sales from the last seven months or so I decided to go back and see which books of mine have sold the most in their lifetime to see if these sales over the last six months have changed the rankings of the books and close but not quite the anti-relationship year is still my best-selling book at about 30 percent the marionettes is close behind at around 25 wicked souls at 15 bloodless ties around nine and broken perfect lies at three poems for the end of the world at three breakable things about one the sweetest kind of poison at about three and the anti-virginity pact at 12. But if we're talking like which series has sold the best, you can see here the marionettes as a series is my best seller at about 49%. The pact series, their connected standalones, is about 42, Broken Pearl Lies at 3%, and then Poetry Overall at about 6 for lifetime sales. So although this book on its own has sold the most, this series I would consider to be my best selling series. They're also pretty close. Like I think the marionettes will pass the anti-relationship year if not within the next update then the next one or you know who knows maybe the anti-relationship year will go viral on tiktok again and it will just keep its what is the word i'm looking for i want to say head start but that's not it those are all the pie charts honestly the last six months have been a bit of a blur the kickstarter that i was talking about earlier is currently ongoing which is something i've been really nervous about and then pleasantly surprised now that it's launched and it's doing so much better than i could have imagined basically it was just the last book in the series was coming out and i wanted something to make it extra special make it more than just like an ordinary book release so the original idea was like this will be how i'm going to do the signed books through it because i usually do them through my website a lot of people have asked me like why kickstarter if you're in the publishing community you probably know why because you've seen how successful other authors have been and so the factors to consider at least on the signed books front when i do that directly through my website i get the most royalties that way because i cut out the costs of any third party taking a percentage i still have to pay to have the books printed and shipped to me obviously but then i'm not paying five percent like i do for kickstarter or you know way more than that if you're buying a book directly off amazon but those aren't signed my point is, the reason why I chose to do this campaign through Kickstarter, this go-around, rather than just doing signed books through my website, was the opportunity to potentially reach a new audience. Kickstarter is becoming a way a lot of authors do these kind of special editions and bonus content things, so a lot of readers are already on there. So even though my audience might not necessarily be used to it and they're kind of confused on me using it, the hope was if my campaign does well enough on Kickstarter, other readers who happen to be on the platform might see it and they might get introduced to my series in that way. And I could reach an entirely different readership than the way that I usually find my readers, which is through like TikTok and Instagram. So part of it was exposure. Part of it was like, I've seen all of these other authors doing it and they're doing so well and I'm curious and I wanna try. And then part of it was also, I wanted to do things other than just regular signed books, which were going to be a huge upfront cost for me. And Kickstarter helps offset that risk with the crowdfunding aspect. So in addition to getting signed books from there, you can get the sprayed edges on the hardcovers. I also had a exclusive jigsaw puzzle created by the designer who did the covers of the series, which was the most expensive aspect of this Kickstarter by far. I worked with the company Jiggy, which means I had to pay to have the art commissioned, and then I also had to pay for a certain amount of inventory, which was 150 puzzles. So we're talking about like a $5,000 investment up front for these puzzles, <laughs> which was stressful, but also as someone who loves doing puzzles myself, I'm not gonna lie, part of me was just like, I don't even care if this is bad investment, I want this. <laughs> There's other stuff in the Kickstarter too, like you can get just swag packs, you can get the ebook early for book four, and then the other kind of incentive to get people over there was I'm offering full sets, so you can get all four paperbacks signed together, kind of like a box set. 
and then same with the hardcovers you can get the full set of them i've also never offered international shipping just through my website before so this is the first time i'm offering that and with the full sets i felt like that made the most sense because no matter what international shipping is going to be horrible so if you're going to do it i figure if you're able to get all of the books at once and pay that horrible shipping fee just the one time it's better that way so that's been something new in the last six months i still have as of the day that i'm filming this 22 more days left in the campaign i set a goal for two thousand dollars for this campaign which obviously would not offset the cost of the puzzle but i wanted to make it reasonable i wanted it to be something i could reach quickly to catch the attention of kickstarter's algorithm which did because they labeled me as a project we love which i think has helped so much for exposure but as of right now we've raised over thirteen thousand dollars for a two thousand dollar goal so I'm pretty, pretty stoked about that. I know a lot of those backers are people who were already from my audience, but I think I have found some new people that way too. And even if new people didn't back the Kickstarter, they may have seen the series, been interested in it, and gone and like read the ebook on Amazon or something, even if they didn't want to pay for the special editions, you know? With how well the books have been selling right now, I kind of feel like that is happening. Anything else new? I did go to another writing retreat, this one in Seattle this last July. I was there for a week, we did some touristy stuff, I worked on Ruthless Ends, and that was a really good time. The update for the release date for Ruthless Ends is something new, I've never had to do that before. The book was originally supposed to come out in September, I ended up having to push the date back just a month to October. If you want more about that, I talk about that a lot in like the part one of this video that I posted before this one. I just ended up needing more time and now I'm feeling a lot better about it. I'm so glad I pushed the date back. The book is going to be so much better off for it. It was the right call 100%. I hate having to push a date back and potentially disappoint readers but it was the right call this time so I'm really glad I let myself do that. That'll be the final book in this series which I've been writing honestly since my career really started. So it's really weird to think about it ending. The first book came out in 2021, but I started writing this book, the first book in 2020, which is when my debut novel, The Anti-Virginity Pact, came out. So this series, I feel like, has been a part of my career basically since the start. And like you saw in the pie charts, it's a bestseller. So ending it is bittersweet and nerve-wracking for a lot of reasons. Just the fact that this is the last book in the series and I have a very passionate readership of course i care about pleasing them and them liking the last book i'm hopeful that now that the series is complete other people might be willing to try it if they didn't want to start it when it was incomplete but also ending my best-selling series and having to start something new does raise those concerns of like am i ever going to be able to write something that's this successful again am i ever going to have a series take off like this again am i going to be able to keep the readers from this series and keep them interested to read other books with different characters so there will be we're just gonna have to see there's gonna be a lot of things changing once I finish this series. I do have a spin-off series idea that I'm really excited about, but I don't think I'll jump straight into that. So there are probably going to be like a year or two where I'm just publishing other stuff and we're going to have to see if I can keep the same momentum with my books going now that I'm not publishing an installment in this series every year. I talked about this in the part one of this video. I don't really have any concrete plans moving forward. I'm just going to kind of take it easy and not put that stress on myself, not make any pre-order dates or set deadlines. I'm just going to see which book is calling to me, get started working on it, and see how things go. I have a million books that I would like to work on, but I have a lot of thinking to do now that this Marionette series is coming to a close, what I want my next move to be, because I think what I do next will be a big turning point in my career and the way the next couple of years pan out for me. So it's not as simple as just like, what book am I going to write next? It's a part of a bigger business and marketing plan. So there's a lot of things to consider. Anyway, I've been talking for a really long time, so I think that's gonna be it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. All of my links for everything are down below in the description. Can't think of anything else for this outro, so I'll just see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Bye. No.
Tschüss.